This is the busiest section of the U.S.-Canada border, and a major new crossing is about to open, the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Once finished, it will link Detroit, Michigan with Windsor, Ontario, ensuring smooth traffic between Canada and the United States. Yet, just a few kilometers north, there's already another bridge serving the same purpose. Farther north, there's even a tunnel offering a similar connection. So why build a new one? And what sets it apart? Let's delve into it. The United States and Canada are ranked as the largest and ninth largest economies globally, respectively. With the United States and Canada being each other's largest trading partners, it's no surprise that their shared border is one of the most developed and interconnected in the world. Stretching across its entire length, the border features over a hundred land crossings, including roads, highways, bridges, and tunnels. Remarkably, goods and services worth approximately $3.6 billion flow across the U.S.-Canada border every single day, a figure surpassing the GDP of some entire nations. Nearly a third of this massive trade volume is concentrated in a narrow corridor connecting Detroit and Windsor via the Detroit River. This vital region, positioned between several major population centers and transportation hubs, facilitates billions of dollars in daily commerce. One of the key crossings in this region is the Ambassador Bridge, a 2.3-kilometer suspension bridge that holds the title of North America's busiest international border crossing by trade volume. This single bridge handles billions of dollars worth of merchandise, representing over a quarter of all goods traded between the U.S. and Canada. However, despite its critical importance and strategic location, the bridge has been at the center of various issues and controversies. Notably, the Ambassador Bridge is entirely privately owned, even though it serves as a vital international link. Since its opening in 1929, neither the governments of Detroit nor Windsor have held ownership. As a result, all tolls, taxes, and revenue generated from its operations do not contribute to meaningful infrastructure improvements in the surrounding areas. The bridge operates entirely as a for-profit enterprise, with most of the revenue being allocated solely to its maintenance and operation. While there are alternative routes in the area, such as the Detroit-Windsor Tunnel, the Ambassador Bridge essentially holds a monopoly on most border traffic. This dominance is due to the tunnel's limitations. It has only two lanes and cannot accommodate large trucks. In contrast, the Ambassador Bridge offers four lanes, supports all types of vehicles, and connects directly to a major highway and metropolitan area on the U.S. side. Another significant drawback of the bridge is its design and capacity. Despite handling up to 10,000 trucks daily, it still only has four lanes to carry traffic across the Detroit River. As a result, the crossing is frequently congested, leading to long waits and frustrating traffic jams. Adding to the problem, the Canadian side of the border lacks a direct connection to any major highway. Instead, the bridge exits into a residential neighborhood with narrow streets that are ill-equipped to handle the heavy traffic it receives. Given these challenges, along with the aging structure of the Ambassador Bridge, now over years old, a modern replacement is long overdue. Enter the Gordie Howe International Bridge, proposed in the early 2000s through a collaboration between the national governments of the United States and Canada. As well as the transportation departments of Michigan and Ontario, this new crossing promises a significant upgrade. Spanning kilometers, it will become the longest cable state bridge in North America upon completion. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will feature six lanes of traffic and a dedicated path for cyclists and pedestrians. Notably, it will not include a railway, as the area already has a train tunnel primarily used for freight transport. The new bridge will be located just three kilometers downstream from the existing Ambassador Bridge, creating inevitable competition between the two crossings for revenue once the Gordie Howe Bridge opens. As expected, this has caused significant tension. The owner of the Ambassador Bridge has even made multiple attempts to obstruct the project's progress, but we'll delve into that later. The Gordie Howe Bridge will be supported by two massive towers on either side of the river, each soaring to an impressive height of 220 meters. The Canadian Tower will become the tallest structure in the city, while the American Tower will comfortably rank as the second tallest. The bridge is named after the legendary Canadian hockey player Gordie Howe, best known for his time with the Detroit Red Wings and widely regarded as one of the greatest to ever play the game. The choice of name reflects the symbolic connection between Gordie Howe and the bridge. Former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder summed it up perfectly in an interview saying, if you think about it, who better represents the two countries and the bond between us than someone who's a legend in both Detroit and Canada? The naming decision reached Gordie Howe a year before his passing, and his simple yet heartfelt reaction was, that sounds pretty good to me. In addition to the bridge itself, the project includes two ports of entry, one on each side of the border. 
on the Canadian side of 50 hectare facility will be constructed, featuring border inspection stations, bridge maintenance facilities, and toll collection areas. Unlike existing crossings, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will directly connect to Ontario Highway 401, ensuring a smoother and more efficient flow of traffic. On the U.S. side, a hectare facility will house border inspection stations and include dedicated highway ramps linking directly to interstate. Together, these ports of entry will establish the first uninterrupted highway connection between Detroit and Windsor. The total cost of the project is estimated at $6.4 billion. With the entire funding provided by the Canadian government, as a result, every aspect of the project, design, engineering, planning, and land acquisition is being managed by a Canadian Federal Crown Corporation called the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. This organization will also oversee the bridge's future operations. The Canadian government plans to recover the construction costs through toll revenue. Because of this arrangement, there will be no toll booths on the U.S. side. All tolls will be collected on the Canadian side with the revenue exclusively benefiting Canada. Construction began in 2018 and was initially projected to be completed in 2024, a timeline of six years. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the bridge's opening date was delayed by an entire year. In June 2024, the project reached a significant milestone when the main deck was finally connected over the Detroit River. The achievement was celebrated with a topping out ceremony, during which workers from both sides of the border signed the final deck segment and placed a traditional evergreen tree at the center, a symbol of a job well done. The entire project, including both border facilities, is now expected to open in. Despite this progress and the numerous benefits the bridge is poised to bring to the region, there have been numerous attempts in the past to halt its development. And at the center of it all is one man. The person who stands to lose the most from the construction of the new bridge is Manuel Maroon, the owner of the Ambassador Bridge, as well as the duty-free shops and gas stations on both sides of the crossing. Back in 2010, when the project was still in its early stages, Maroon filed a lawsuit against the governments of Canada and Michigan aiming to stop any work on a new crossing over the Detroit River. He argued that a new bridge would interfere with his right to build a second span of the Ambassador Bridge next to the existing one. In 2012, Maroon spent $30 million to fund a proposed amendment to Michigan's constitution, which would have required approval from Detroit and Michigan voters in a statewide election before any new bridge could be constructed. The proposal was quickly rejected when Michigan voters voted against the amendment. Throughout the remainder of the 2010s, Maroon continued to file lawsuits against the governments of Canada and Michigan in an effort to stop the new bridge's construction. However, each of these lawsuits was dismissed by the United States Supreme Court. Even after Maroon's death in 2020, his family and estate kept pursuing legal action, preparing to file yet another lawsuit for damages related to the bridge's construction. Despite all of Maroon's attempts to maintain his monopoly over the border crossing, the Gordie Howe International Bridge is now nearing completion. With the bridge span already connecting both sides of the border, the most challenging part of this massive project has already been accomplished. And now we'll just have to wait and see how this new bridge will affect Detroit, Windsor, and the rest of the US and Canada. So what do you think about the Gordie Howe International Bridge? Would it completely replace the existing bridge? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you want to see more about similar projects, you should visit our channel. Thank you for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.